Hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to another episode of Bones and Stones. Uh, today, we all have our warm clothes on. Very cold day in Joburg, and I see our guest today is also wearing lots of layers. Oh, Winter's definitely yeah. taking cold at the moment, and especially with uh, our guest coming all the way from Lesotho. So, in Tabi Singh, uh, Mokwena Mokali, thank you very much for joining us today. It's great to have you. Um, in Tabi Singh is a lecturer at the National uh, University of Lesotho. And uh, we know uh, Intabi Singh from her days at WITS, and she's currently uh, registered at UCT, uh, wrapping up her PhD at the moment, which is very exciting as well. So we thought we'd uh, bring Intabi on today to talk a little bit about her PhD research, what she's been up to, and then also talk a little bit maybe about the ASAPA conference. And maybe we can, we can start with that, uh, the upcoming ASAPA mm -hmm. conference, which was meant to be next year. Um, Obviously, with all of the yeah. COVID worries, uh, things have changed a little bit. So Intabi Singh, uh, yeah, let's maybe hear about the uh, plans for ASAPA. Oh, yes, we're very excited. This is the first time this and the did like about four times or three times and we never got a chance to, to hold. So everybody's very excited at the university, at the ministry, um, and everybody's hands on. We have already a local organizing committee that's a variety of experts in the heritage uh, um, department uh, in this, in, in the, at the university and at the ministry, so we're very excited. We've got the museum, local museums also joining us, helping with preparation. So um, we're excited and we're hoping that you'll enjoy uh, what we have for, in store for you. Um, we'll use social media to communicate with everybody who's interested in coming to, to attend the conference. So you'll get updates on how far we are and what, uh, what we, we want to we want you to know uh, pretty excited and, and yeah, encouraging everybody who's uh, uh, in Africa to come and join us and uh, in, in the international world to come and see what we have in store. Yeah. That sounds very exciting. We're all very excited. I mean, the SOPA conference is definitely a, a great opportunity to uh, reconnect with all of our colleagues and stuff and to share stories. Um, and Tabi Singh, maybe just to, to play devil's advocate here, because I know the SOPA conference is now being pushed out. Is it from next year to 2023? Is that correct? Yes, okay. that's correct. Yeah. Okay, so my question was, is that um, I see that there have been a lot of online conferences that have been happening obviously as an immediate kind of knee-jerk reaction to COVID, uh, you know, so that people can still host events, for example. So did the ASAPA uh, organizing committee yourself and the rest of the committee members uh, consider the possibility of maybe doing the event online um, versus, you know, doing a face-to-face -face meet in 2023? Most definitely. I mean, if this uh, pandemic is getting worse in the next coming year, I mean, definitely you have to consider an online Conference. Then I've, I've, I've joined a, a few international workshops online and they've been very successful. So we could definitely um, go the venture if things are not, are not coming up, um, uh, I mean, are not getting better next year. So definitely, that definitely, and then we will see how it goes down the line. Yeah. Perfect. I suppose it's so difficult to plan things at the moment. Um, you know, in terms exactly. of forecasting for the future, so it really does, you know, uh, depend what happens over the next couple of months. But just to change topic quickly, I'm just going to hand over to Tim. He's got a question for you, and Tabi. All right. Dumela me upele joang. I'm slowly losing the little bit of society that I had when I was living there. Yes, I'm very impressed. I'm very, very impressed. Um, Nabi, I wanted to actually ask you about your PhD uh, and how it's going. Have you submitted it? I know um, you were at the end. Uh, as far as I think you have submitted, right? Or not yet? Um. Not yet, not yet. <laughs> okay, but, but nearly there. But I'm, I'm towards the red, right here. Okay. Towards, like up right now. Okay, cool. I was, I was hoping... Yeah, so... Yeah? Oh, I was just going to tell you a little bit about what I'm... What I'm That's awesome, yeah. Yet. That's uh, what I was going to ask. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> okay, so just a bit of background on why I chose this, um, this topic or uh, this, uh, this research. Um, I've seen a lot of uh, archaeological projects in Lesotho that have been happening in the past, looking at mainly Stone Age um, period. And I thought 
to look at contemporary communities or contemporary ecology and look at the Basotho nation was formed because it's quite a, a, a young nation. So we're looking at about um, 1800s. That's when the Basotho nation was actually formed. So um, I looked at, I chose Tawabisi as the place, the place where Basotho nation was formed. Um, so I thought I could look at uh, and the kind of cultures that eventually led to what we know as Basotho nation today. So that's basically focused. That's basically what I've been focusing on, looking at the theology and trying to see what kind of um, cultures we have that interacted on top of Tuvabisi as a place where um, uh, we saw Morena Mosheche, which is the king of the Vasutu Nation, different cultures that eventually formed the Vasutu Nation today. And also the um, cultures of people who came on top of the mountains to negotiate peace, to negotiate uh, new um, interactions. So that's why we're finding a lot of material, uh, glass beads, glass um, uh, ceramics, and also we're finding a, a material that's also connected to the African. Uh, so I'm very excited about what, what we're getting right now. Yeah, for me, because it's quite a, um, there's some things that I had to stay away from, and, uh, but I try to manage to get a, as much as we can out of the mountain. Yeah, so. Yeah. One of the things that I always found really fascinating about your PhD and um, is that you have this nice oral history as well of the site that, and then you exploring it from an archeological perspective and bringing these two things together. How have you found uh, doing that? I mean, has it been something that's been easy enough to do or has it been very challenging? Uh, it's been very helpful. Well, the oral records have been very useful, and um, I'm going to give you an example. When I look at the stratigraphy and the kind of material culture I'm finding, uh, but African historically are known to have occupied this region before many groups that came down. So the most bottom layers, I'm getting material that is linked to African culture. Okay. So um, that sort of cover, corroborates what the history tells us. So that I found very exciting. Yeah, it's thanks, awesome. Thanks. That's awesome. Yeah, sorry, I, I was actually going to ask a question in relation to your research as well. Um, having just read a, a little bit um, of, of uh, research um, that's that's going on in Lesotho at the moment as well, that, that I know somebody's dealing with. Um, just looking uh, holistically at the Lesotho nation, uh, and its its formation as a, as a collective. Presumably, there were lots of um, uh, smaller minority uh, ethnic groups included within that uh, a collective term of the Basutu Nation. Um, how important is it to capture some of those minority voices? Um, you know, within the broader kind of context or narrative of the Basutu Nation. Oh my goodness, that's a very within the heritage and city. Um, uh, struggles in the Sutra. So, um, even with the students in uh, the Lesotho, we're trying to embrace the different cultural uh, uh, identities that we have in Lesotho. So, for instance, Babuti, Madabele, the courses, we have such a dignity. So, as much as you may see as a homogeneous group, but as actually when we look deeper, we have all these different uh, cultural differences. But uh, I mean, it's very interesting to look at those and how everybody's embracing their identities individually within this larger uh, cultural group. So um, that's what we've been trying to, uh, to, to talk more about. And even the location trying to embrace that cultural element um, so we have one local radio station that, that presents news in Kosa, in, in Gabele. So um, that's very interesting. And I thought, uh, I think uh, that my research will also highlight that element of, of diversity, of cultural diversity and enculturation in, 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 in the Sutu and the Basutu identity. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks, Ntavi. Yeah, it really seems like there's quite yeah. a complex yeah. cultural landscape uh, in, in the city. But maybe just to yeah. jump uh, topics a little bit, something we were discussing beforehand, uh, dam developments, dam developments in the city mm -hmm. and heritage management. Uh, we can maybe uh, discuss, you know, the, the impact of 
those kinds of developments and how that is affecting heritage management within the country? Oh my goodness, um, it's been quite a challenging uh, area, uh, especially for, uh, for us as heritage. It's, it's essentially also uh, representing that uh, uh, our part, um, see that our identity as, as, this, uh, as the heritage. Um, so embracing that and how we can um, ensure management of heritage that are, that's affected by um, dam constructions has uh, forced us to communicate with co local communities to see what kind of issues um, they're mostly worried about and would want their heritage if, if these dam constructions continue to be introduced in the country. So future, uh, for the future, we avoid um, previous um, uh, what, uh, clashes or, or uncomfortable situations with, with local communities and um, the loss of heritage that, that we've experienced in the past. So um, it's something that we really feel strongly about. And I know um, a lot of heritage experts in the Sutu are trying to make to issues and move forward and promote heritage in the midst of such uh, development constructions. Because for some communities, they bring um, economic, economic growth. growth. Mm. So there's that clash of interest. Um, see, so um, mainly communication is the best way to go with local communities and uh, that's what we've been encouraging at the moment. Yeah. Absolutely. Thanks. Thanks, Ntabi. Yeah, I suppose, um, you know, uh, interacting with communities is so important as well because it's not only the tangible heritage that is at risk, it's also that intangible component, mm -hmm. which is, you know, pretty much unknown and unrecorded if you know that interaction between the heritage specialist uh, you know it doesn't happen with the relevant communities but i'm just going to hand over to tim he's got another question for you yeah it's just it's a follow-up to what you were talking about Tabby, because looking from the outside in and obviously having been involved in in some of the well one of the dam developments uh, in lesotho looking at the archaeology that's happening in lesotho uh, and it's been going on for a very long time and as you point out that's primarily in the stone age but looking at archaeology affecting current communities um, or, or heritage affecting current communities and then more recent histories and archaeologies. It seems like Lesotho, and please, I want to ask if, if this reflection is correct, but it seems like Lesotho is really okay. pushing some of the boundaries here in terms of how we can blend community engagement, archaeology, heritage management, heritage practices. And it, 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 in my mind, it has a really good outlook. Um, and so that a lot of us should be practicing in other parts of the world and, and South Africa, for example. Um, is, that, is that accurate? I mean, is that, what you, is that what you're feeling as well in the country? Most definitely. I mean, um, everywhere you go in the departments that deal with uh, heritage, um, you see people who are invested in promoting heritage and ensuring that all the, the necessary um, areas that, that are covered around cultural heritage are um, uh, sort of managed. And, um, there's that movement you, you see right now of promoting culture, promoting heritage. Mm -hmm. Within the different um, uh, uh, area and department. Yeah, I mean, you know, just from my interactions with, you know, uh, yourself, seeing the work that you're doing, hearing about your PhD, um, Stephen Gill and his colleagues at Mauritius, for example, um, you know, Peter Mitchell and Charlie and the team that they brought out, Rachel King, the kind of work that's happening, it's really exciting stuff. And I think in terms of yeah. engaging with living heritage and intangible cultural heritage, you know, it's, it's, it's really, um, it's sort of driving the field forward, which is just, I think it's, it's really fantastic to see it. And it's very exciting. Yeah, I mean, I've been privileged to be, um, uh, to be at the forefront of, of making sure that we, we uplift our uh, um, And as part of the Vastutu community myself, I felt a, a certain um, almost, uh, a responsibility to make sure that we, we, our, our communities are free yeah. to embrace that individual cultures, to embrace that individual heritage. So I'm, I'm quite excited to be part of this movement and I'm, awesome. I'm hoping that with this ASAPA conference, as we discussed earlier, it will sort of shine what we've been trying to do yeah. and, and, and also um, make Basutu comfortable with, with who, who they are um, in, 
Well, thanks. Uh, thanks so much, Ntabi. I think we're going to call it there because we're coming up on time. But thanks so much for your time today. And uh, yeah, Tim and I look forward to coming back to Lesotho uh, and hopefully seeing you in oh, person yes. at the actual conference uh, as opposed to doing anything virtually. Um, it's, it's much more enjoyable to have a beer after a session together as opposed to sitting alone in a room drinking a beer virtually. <laughs> but just the, the appeal and, isn't there. Yeah. But Ntabi, but thank you again. Thank really you, appreciate yeah. it. And uh, keep thank warm. Thank you so much. Uh, it's good. Thank you so much. It's good to see you. See you soon. Yes. Yes. Thanks very much.